So we're going to speak Russian for a change. Since we don't have much time for a deeper discussion, we are going to do this. I'm going to make a statement, I'm going to share my opinion, and then I'll ask for your opinion. And then, if we still have time, I'll ask you the second question. Since we all like talking, uh, I guess we won't have much time left. So anyway, why are we here together with Dmitry? Well, apart from that, we are extremely interesting people. We have so many things to say. We also work together on a research project which is part of our field research um, group program. And uh, actually, it's an invisible program, but it's one of the most interesting programs here at the museum. And um, we, of course, are not an academic institution, but uh, we play the role of a higher education institution, which is um, uh, carrying out um, um, uh, very clo close to the academic uh, research, something which is very close to academic research. So, Dmitry, I've been uh, thinking about something uh, like we are doing something very important uh, on this program, and maybe that's the reason why we have such an ambitious title of the exhibition, Liberating Knowledge. So I'm going to give a brief um, overview of um, field research and uh, why we have to liberate something. So briefly, this is a program that we started in 2013, and we wanted to invite um, lots of different people from abroad, mainly international experts and researchers, uh, artists and curators that used to come to Russia in order to study um, uh, either forgotten events or um, almost uh, forgotten uh, uh, characters or uh, protagonists from Russian history. So now uh, it's been several years since we've been doing uh, this uh, we are in 2017, we have accumulated some experience, and I can tell you that this has been a very complicated process, because there are so many different institutions in Russia, and uh, the researchers try to approach those institutions in order to dig uh, uh, some materials, and they turned out to be either closed, or they couldn't get access, uh, or uh, maybe people uh, had some doubts with regard to the role of the artist uh, as a very strange person, uh, uh, not a professional, who was uh, uh, looking for something. He wanted to get to know something, but it wasn't quite clear why they wanted to know it, why they had to provide them all those historical materials. So it was very often uh, when we faced the same uh, um, thing to explain. We had to explain that, you know, they're not spies. They are not foreign agents. So um, this title of the exhibition, Liberating Knowledge, is uh, something that uh, is very important today for the development of both political and social history. It's important to give access to such materials because we know that knowledge can be dangerous. So as far as I understand, uh, we are trying to liberate knowledge from this uh, conservative and uh, closeness, uh, um, closed view. Uh, so we're trying to liberate it from closed institutions. And another uh, opinion that I wanted to share with you, it's my personal opinion, I think we are liberating knowledge in the process of um, moving one object, one piece of art from archive to a piece of art. So my first question for you is, uh, 
what uh, relationship do you see between archive research and the piece of art what kind of process is it you can focus on this uh, um, uh, links to the truth and uh, uh, can uh, knowledge be liberated and if if it uh, uh, if it exists um, how can it happen? Then uh, Dmitry has a great experience of putting together theory and practice. Uh, they have their own uh, house of culture where they uh, are exploring different theoretical assumptions that they have. So the, the floor is yours, Dmitry. Thank you, Snezhana. I'm really glad to continue this long dialogue with you. Actually, this uh, connection between the archive uh, research and art practices is extremely interesting. It can be quite controversial. You know, it can be simplified easily. It's clearly that whatever the artist does, can be interpreted as research from a certain point of view because uh, the artist uh, is living his life, uh, sleeping, talking, communicating, and this can be a process of research. If you like uh, this, whether you like this um, uh, word or not, uh, it can be used legim legitimately in this uh, context. And research leads uh, naturally to the accumulation of, or of archive. The artist uh, collects certain things, uh, the artist performs different actions, uh, and as a result, uh, there's a lot of material being accumulated. People are writing some notes in their notebooks, uh, uh, there are some records, there are some documents, uh, uh, interviews are being um, recorded. Uh, and when the artist does this, uh, he or she is never sure why uh, they do it. Uh, there's some intuitive inclination towards this. And then something really interesting happens, something which is called signature in English. So the artist uh, uh, transfers um, uh, the archival material uh, to the public space and a piece of art is being born. But this piece of art uh, comes out from a uh, um, um, small share of what has been accumulated by the artist. Then uh, the artist can die or can withdraw from his practices. Uh, the um, a group of artists can collapse. And then the, uh, the researchers uh, come on stage and begin to chase something that doesn't have a signature. So what do we do with this? For example, exhibiting things without signature is a different artistic act uh, uh, created by an institution or a curator or the archive. So in, this is a very strange uh, situation that uh, uh, brings forward many different things. So since we're looking for the truth, uh, uh, we always try to use words uh, that uh, can mean different things. Uh, for example, we use the word um, research, but research means a very broad uh, thing, so it's better to uh, define it. Uh, uh, for example, I'm going to take part uh, in um, Gerish school and we are going to use the term militant uh, research or activist research. Militant uh, is a word that is difficult to translate uh, into Russian. Uh, I uh, uh, ask to use the same uh, word, uh, militantly, because it doesn't have uh, a right um, word here in the Russian language. So I'm a uh, uh, supporter of a heretical approach. Uh, um, uh, uh, you can uh, 
research uh, the ha house of culture only if you open your own house of culture and then you'll be able to understand how those uh, conservative models work um, why they can be valuable uh, so you mentioned that uh, uh, it's a natural it's a relevant practice for us and uh, uh, I have brought some newspapers here uh, it was published quite long time ago about these houses of cultures and uh, you can um, pick a copy if you want so speaking about uh, the research um, carried out by garage there are so many uh, things that uh, when one t thing turn into another for example if you ask me whether this work in this uh, uh, space whether it's going to be a work of art are you going to put your signature it's going to be a work by the group Что делать? Uh, then uh, if somebody tells me you are doing uh, bad art I'll say I don't care whether you consider this to be art or not. So uh, so this is non-art. And then um, there are many things that come out of non-art, just like the way it happened in modernist practices. There's nothing special about it. So it's not, it, uh, it's not necessarily a work of art. There are so many researchers involved into this process. They have their own agency, their own subjective view. So it's also a curatorial process project for us. It is a curatorial project for you as well as for us because we organize this material with involvement of many researchers. So it's a new force, form of existence of different art practices and maybe they don't need translation. Maybe we'll uh, uh, create um, uh, some piece of art later on. You know, we uh, work uh, on this uh, program, activist uh, uh, clubs, uh, and uh, they have a signature. And uh, now there's uh, going to be an opening in Berlin uh, 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 of a takeaway. So we provide our drawings, but then uh, our partners in Berlin are going to uh, generate their meanings. Well, just to clarify what the field research team is uh, doing, we are carrying out uh, a large-scale research related to the genealogy of uh, the House of Cultures. And it happens not only in Russia, but also in Estonia and Belarus. Uh, there are 14 researchers uh, who graduated from the school. They are all the school graduates. And uh, I guess uh, they believe in this collective spirit of work. And Dmitry mentioned a very interesting uh, thing, that the archive uh, is uh, always revolving around the artist. And uh, Whatever the artist is doing, it's all uh, related to the activation of certain things. So uh, the artists are doing something all the time. And so it means that uh, he or she is always uh, inside his own archive. And then uh, some work of art might um, uh, come out of this. Uh, so when we organize such exhibition based on research projects, um, means that we are always balancing on this uh, uh, boundary uh, whether what we exhibit are um, uh, uh, archive materials or it's a piece of art of course we all we are always in di in a dialogue with the artist and uh, the signature uh, is easy to understand to understand uh, if the artist uh, says that this is a piece of art then it's a piece of art uh, just like um, uh, with the artist themselves if the artist considers himself uh, an artist then uh, it's true he's an artist but you said that you were not sure whether this is going to be a piece of art. Uh, you said that uh, this is research material which is going to be uh, displayed. And uh, I guess it's part of uh, your philosophy. Yes, I actually don't see much difference between curatorial and artistic practices. You know, after the last uh, documenta, uh, this difference disappeared completely. 
but getting back to liberating knowledge. Well, liberating knowledge uh, is um, uh, a process related to opening of closed information. So we're trying to shed light onto that kind of information. And so we make it accessible. Then we digitize it. Uh, we open access to it. Uh, um, the copyright is removed, uh, which is very important. But if this is an act of liberation, um, it's, uh, it, it also might be an act of transparency, uh, which is related to post-colonial practices. For example, uh, the Western researchers come to study something. Uh, they, re they say uh, it's a dark space. Now they uh, put a projector uh, and project projecting light on it. And then this uh, uh, area becomes transparent. Uh, there is a, g a very interesting dialectics uh, in this process because certain uh, things still remain a mystery, and the pressure of uh, mystery and the clandestine is very important in art. Sometimes artists uh, think uh, it's uh, uh, better to destroy some uh, in, uh, works. For example, we create uh, time capsules, and uh, in some cases we reveal uh, or what's inside that time capsule. And in some uh, in some cases, we do not do this. So there's this interplay between uh, uh, transparency and non-transparency, um, permeability and non-permeability, because some people don't want to be archived at the moment, because they worry about this magic of art uh, that uh, uh, will be exposed. It will be totally naked. Uh, uh, so uh, some uh, people are trying to protect from this globalized X-ray. Going back to our project, I can say that we focus on a different thing. We uh, wanted to talk about the generation that came to life at a difficult time period. They are ch the children uh, of the um, families uh, that uh, um, uh, suffered from economic um, uh, crisis, from economic shock of the 1990s. So uh, uh, it was interesting for us to explore how that generation of people could touch a different kind of culture through houses of culture, Deka in Russian. So it's about the experience of communication with the post-Soviet, which was very often tragic and uh, traumatic. That's why we focus a lot on films de um, In those films, they uh, talk about uh, those deca, those, uh, those houses of culture. And uh, uh, you see that those people that were 25 or 27 year old all had their own house of culture where they, for example, could go and join chess club or ballroom dancing club and all sorts of clubs and studios and then how they encountered civilization, lack of heating, or the first library where they could see completely different books. So it was an island of the post-Soviet. I think the most interesting thing that you have in your program uh, was this vector of research, uh, or, um, uh, re research of the residues, uh, Soviet residues which uh, no matter how negative uh, um, uh, they were, still they had some uh, potential. And that's what we have been trying to talk about uh, for 20 years. So liberating that potential, revealing that potential is uh, all about liberation, which is uh, against time. 
and uh, it was also very important for us how to synchronize it uh, with social center uh, construction, with the transformation of progressive institutions. What is garage? Garage is a new kind of uh, um, house of culture. It's not a museum. Yeah, we actually wanted to turn a garage into a house of culture, in a big house of culture. But then we uh, decided it's already uh, it already has it but you know the car uh, house of culture is a utopian uh, uh, removal um, uh, uh, of the participation effect uh, and representation of art you know you, you just not study art you put uh, your paintings on the wall uh, you take pictures and then you show them you um, uh, go to theater studio so you invite elderly people they give a round of applause then you have New Year's celebration lots of things related uh, to uh, that work uh, uh, to prevent the alienation of culture. Of course, uh, uh, the Soviet Union uh, used very conservative forms. Uh, and uh, it's interesting why the, uh, uh, so the Soviet Union insisted on um, high art. Uh, um, uh, for example, the dance, it had to be an absolute di uh, distance. So uh, even the vernacular was turned into this ideal culture. Uh, so they always uh, uh, looked up to a very high bar um very high standards, you know. We, um, even though we live in Norilsk, a very far away place, we can be belly dancers. So it creates a subjective attitude to arts and culture, and that's extremely important. Uh, well, we have to um, round up our conversation. So maybe we have um, um, replied uh, to the question, when do you need archive? But I hope it was interesting for you to listen to our talk.